Okay, I think I should start. Hello, um, my name is Holger. I will talk about um, a story about reproducible builds. And yeah, I'll start with slowly. So as I said, my name is Holger and I don't speak Portuguese, I'm sorry. So you need to listen in English. Um, I go by the Nick Holger as well, it's just written differently. So that's, that's me on IRC. And I'm involved or I'm interested in computers since a long time, um, 25 years or something. I'm a Debian user since 23 years and contributing also a long time. And I'm a freelancer, which I've started, by the way, after I've been to Fizzle in 2004, the Forum International <coughs> Software Libre, which was one of the reasons I became a freelancer. And some bits more about Debian and me. So I started 2001 contributing and become a De Debian developer in 2007. I was involved in organizing DebConf. So if you have questions about DebConf, I'm happy to talk about this as well. Um, I started the video team. Stefano is now the better person to talk about video. Um, I do work on Debian Edu still. Debian Edu is Debian for schools and universities. Um, I'm one of the two people running PU parts Debian org, which tests package installation, upgrade, and removal, and checks that the system is still the same after you removed a package. So it's basically quality assurance. And this led me to set up Jenkins Debian Net. Um, Jenkins is the basis of many things of I will discuss in this talk. But Jenkins has 1,300 jobs, I think, and only 200 of them are related to reproducible builds. The others test some other stuff in Debian. And <coughs> I'm now a Cubes OS user, which so I don't run Debian as my primary operating system anymore. So if you want to talk about learn more about Cubes, um, I'm happy to talk about this as well. And I use Core Boot, so I don't, that's for the BIOS. So the BIOS is normally a non-free blob, and I run a free software there. So I'm also happy to talk about this, if you want to know this. So ask me anything, either now during the talk or the next days. I'm happy, um, yeah. And also in this talk, feel free to interrupt. If you have questions, that's fine, or later. But this talk is about reproducible builds. And that was started in Debian five years ago by Luna. And has a bit more history. Um, and I've been involved in it since 2014. And these slides are taken from Chris Lump, who's also involved since 2014 in reproducible builds. We work a lot together. And his slides just, I was bored of giving the talk with my slides, so I cho chose to switch to his slides. This is now the second time I give the talk with these slides. Um, <coughs> Chris also wrote a Sudoku solver in PostScript. So if you think PostScript or some files are not code, that is just wrong. PDFs can also execute whatever. They have database connectors, and um, so it's not always just text. The same is true for office documents or other stuff. Um, so, but to tell the story about the three developers, so <coughs> first we have Alice. Alice is a software developer. She writes code, whatever, maybe a Bitcoin wallet or some other cryptocurrency thing, and she <coughs> um, releases the source code and some access, some Deb Debian package, or some RPM. And it's cool, it works, and there's the source code, you can review the source. And then suddenly, sometimes, somebody knocks on her door and says, hey, <coughs> um, you don't have a dirty secret, but maybe her sister has, or she has a house, or whatever, she's blackmailed into modifying the binaries. So they are asked, you, you still release the source code as it is, but, so the source code stayed the same, the source is good as always, just the binary is not the same as from the source code anymore. And people check the source code and think the source code is fine. 
and the downloaded binaries, they are different than, they don't come from the source code people review. And that's bad. <laughs> um, the other scenario is Bob. Bob is a hacker or something. He has a strange keyboard and he maintains a lot of machines. So he maintains these servers and stuff is being built. There are lots of software is built. And it's cool. Bob knows a lot about security and thinks the system are cool. But the systems are on the internet 24 7 and sometimes they get compromised. And they build these binaries for people who download them and then they get, they get compromised. And that's bad. <laughs> and this is Carol. Carol is a nice person and Carol is not the problem. The problem is Eve. <laughs> and Eve <coughs> puts, while well, that is the evil mate attack, so Carol, Carol leaves her lap laptop alone, either at home or in a hotel or whatever, and then Eve comes plugs in some USB thing and um, backdoors her computer. And then when um, Carol gives software to somebody else, the software is compromised. And the, the four freedoms from the, from the Free Software Foundation define that one purpose is that you can redistribute copies to help your neighbor. But if you give your neighbor Trojan software, you don't help your neighbor. So that is a problem. Um, so the general problem, what I've described here, is that we can review the source for malicious flaws or problems, but users install pre-compiled pre packages. So whatever you review is not really what they get. You, re you get something else, then you review. And the question is, can we trust this compilation progress process? And, well, this has happened, this has happened, this has happened, this, 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 everybody gets hacked. So this Bob thinks he's good, but he isn't. And it goes on and on and on. This is also this evil made thing also happened. There's an attack to this to get the boot encryption, um, the disk encryption compromised. Um, yeah, there are many examples. You've probably seen many of them yourself. So what is the solution for that? So <coughs> we, we start with the same source and the same build environment and then we ensure that builds always have identical results. And when I say identical, I mean bit by bit identical. And every bit is the same. And then we compare the results. And so if we do this in the, there's David has some hash and Aaron has some hash, that's the, the hash of the binary. And there's Fred, and Fred has a different hash. So what does that mean? It either means that Fred has been compromised or David or Aaron, but one of them is wrong, or the software is not reproducible. But if the software normally builds the same bit, then if you get these results, then something is wrong. And so if Alice will be blackmailed, this will be discovered, because you rebuild it, get the different results, everybody gets the same result except Alice, then you know Alice has been compromised. The same with Bob, everybody else, gets a different checksum, we know Bob is compromised. And also if the laptop will be tampered, we will notice that. So, <coughs> and it also reduces the insensitive to attack in the first place, because if you know your attack can be detected, you probably don't do that. You would do something else. Maybe you would <coughs> compromise the source code then, but you would not attack the compilation process anymore. And <coughs> So reproducible builds really allow verification that no flaws have been introduced during the compilation process. Not in the source, just the reproducible builds are only make, only make sure that the compilation process is secure. So <coughs> it's not about reliable builds, that is that you can repeat it. Um, 
it's also not built with the same dependencies. So that is, we can reproduce the build and just do it again and again. It's about identical build results. And it's not only the build with the binaries which the software has, but the whole package. Because we just want to, in the pack, case of the Debian package, the Debian package contains of binaries and documentation and scripts and images. And we don't want to say we exclude some of the Debian package. We just want to look at everything. Because <coughs> if you want, need to inspect it, it doesn't scale anymore. You need to look into it and ignore this and write complicated code to ignore some part. And then the code might be buggy. So the thing is, the whole Debian package should be identical. And I would, as I first heard about it, I was, I thought that would be the case, um, that software would be identical. But there are many reasons why software is not identical when you rebuild it. So there's hash ordering, database ordering, dictionary <coughs> ordering, which can be different in each build, and then the build result is different. Or parallel builds, if some software builds parallel and the um, the, some parts are executed in different order, then the result can be different. Timestamps, if, if there's a timestamp in the build and you rebuild at a different time and the timestamp is in there, then you have different results again. The build path can also leak into the binary. And also the file system is not always deterministic. If you do LS, LS will sort for the output for you. But if you do a find on the file system, then X4 will not have the same results. Some file systems have all deterministic ordering, but not all of them. Um, so that can be a problem. And there's, there's more reasons, but these are the main causes. <coughs> and of course, user group, the environment variable, all this stuff can be in the build. So your username or my username or whatever can be in there. And while we did this and looked at lots of software and built it several times, we found that reproducible builds have other advantages. Um, because if you have no changes normally between two builds and then you do a change, for example, there's a security update, then you have a very minimal diff. And you can really look, is the diff what it's supposed to be? That is pretty useful. The other is also if you ca can have the same result, you have better caches, and you save time and money and also CO2, so you save the environment with reproducible builds. And <coughs> this is no joke, Google does reproducible builds because they save compilation time, so they save developer time, so they save money with it. Um, and you can also detect corrupt build environments. So if somebody does an upload for stable and builds it in unstable, you will see it or whatever, you have broken dependencies installed. And you can also use it to remove build dependencies just to see, is this build dependency used at all? So if you get the same result without a build dependency, you can just remove it. <coughs> and we found lots of bugs, which I will have a few examples of that. Um, so one bug we found was a predictable, predictable OpenID secret. So, um, this was in the code, which then whoops, resulted in this um, secret. And every installation has the same secret. And so it's not really a secret. Um, and we found this by looking that this ha happened, every, every build has a different secret ID, but that's not a secret. Also, sometimes man pages if you build them with different locales or different, it's mostly locales for man pages, then you get different man pages, and that is a bug. It's just not a reproducibility issue, but the man page should look the same. There should not be random <coughs> characters there. Um, I'll leave this off. This was also, it's also a lovely bug. So you have two functions. It was a test case, and it generates two strings, um, which are 16 characters long, and their strings should sub each string should contain A, B, and C. And then there's an assert, which um, should make sure that the resulting string includes A, B, and C. But of course, these strings can also just include A and B, or C and B and not A. 
And so <coughs> then you get an assertion error because the string does not contain one of the letters it should contain. And somebody did the math and so it fails 0.46% of the cases. It's really rare but these things happen and then you stand there and why does it fail? Um, and of course this is just a byproduct of our work but it's useful. Um, so what did we do to, to find this? We started in Debian um, and in 2014 I set up this, what it has become a torture test um, where we vary a lot of things. So we, <coughs> we do two builds and then we compare the result whether it's the same and these two builds vary by the time and the date. So we have one machine or one test is running in the future, it's running one year and a month ahead and the time is also different. We change the host name and the domain name of the machine. We use different file systems or we also wrote disorderfs. Disorderfs is a fuse file system which will give either a random order or um, you can also say that it should one forward or reverse sorting that we will see if the code does not do the ordering itself. We have the builds are in a different time zones and different locales so we build um, we only build with Latin locales at the moment. We don't do Arabic or this stuff that would probably find more bugs, but we find enough bugs with this already. We build with different user ID and different group ID. We vary the kernel and the CPU type. Um, and then, then we look at the results. And when we did this in 2013, for the first time, 24% of packages in Debian were reproducible. Well, now we are at 93%, um, which is quite good. But 93% of 25,000 packages still means there's 1,800 unreproducible packages. So that's still a lot of things to do. And as we looked at these packages for four years, these are also the harder cases. Um, so it will take, still take some more time. And this is, on, this is the graph for unstable. And so the green packages are the reproducible ones, the orange ones are the unreproducible ones, the red fail to build, and the black ones are some others. And you can see, or you cannot see probably, but the graph started in October in 2014, and it's going till March 2018. And um, this graph actually doesn't have 93%, but only 88%, I think because this is unstable and um, there's one problem we haven't fixed yet which is the build pass. The build pass is leaked into um, the binary of objects of many um, of comp comp compilation objects but also man pages. So when we test uh, Debian testing, so Buster, where we have 93%, we don't vary the build pass because there's too many problems with the build pass we have not yet fixed. While in unstable, when we test unstable, we do vary the build pass, so there's 5% less reproducible packages. So there's probably, I don't know the number, 2,800 or something. And the fix is really easy, just build in a deterministic build pass, for example, slash build, slash package name, slash source code, as version, and then you get this 93%. And it's important because um, this is similar with the in Debian, for our Debian test, we vary the timestamp, uh, the, the, the locale and the time zone um, because we want developers to be able to build in their environment. If you have your system set to Portuguese, we want the results to be the same as if somebody builds in English. But it would be easy to just always say, always use UTC as a time zone, always use locale C, and always use this build pass, but we really want to fix it properly because it's <coughs> in the end, it's it is compute, it's called computer science and if you have some deterministic input and a deterministic compilation process, the results should be det deterministic as well and not just random. So that's not science. Um, this is the URL you can easily go, it will just say yes or no. <laughs> I will also give the percentage but um, we'll have this domain for some more years I guess. <laughs> Um, so, and beyond Debian, we started testing this for Debian 
And then we thought, okay, we can also build other stuff. So we now build core boot, or <coughs> these, there's, there are more projects involved. But on this Jenkins Debian net, there we build core boot, open WRT, NetBSD, FreeBSD, Arch Linux, <coughs> and FDroid are all built on Debian resources. And that's really nice because we have now the reproducible, reproducible builds team. It's now a cross distro project where people from many distros collaborate together and share the fixes because we all use the same sources. We have some modifications, but the base source is the same. And then there's other projects which joined. Um, and Tails is an example where it goes beyond reproducible builds but to reproducible installation, which is a different problem in the case because then you um, install packages and then the post ins is executed. And post ins again, does unreproducible stuff. It creates a directory which has a timestamp. It creates user which where the user ID might be different in which due to the order apt installs the packages. So if you do apt install foo and then 20 packages are installed, the order in which these 20 packages are installed is not deterministic. And Tails has fixed that for Tails and we will work on getting these fixes back into Debian. Um, <coughs> yeah, and there's, so there's, these are two problems we have in this reproducible builds area, which one is reproducible builds and the other is reproducible installation. And then this reproducible builds problem is also again split into two problems because what we've done so far is just showing in theory that Debian can be 93% reproducible. But to actually prove that and do this, we also need infrastructure that people can test and prove this. And all this infrastructure and the other tools are mostly still needing work. So for Debian, um, in general, what we came, what we came up with Um, so to reproduce, you need to have the same environment, which was originally used to build the package. And so we came up with .build info files, which record the environment. In the Debian case, it's a list of packages where, which were installed. So if you want to reproduce some software, something is uploaded to Unstable today, and say you want to reproduce it in a month, then Unstable will be different. So, or Buster will be different. So you need to recreate the exact same environment. And for that we have built info files and then it should be possible. But this is for me this practical problem of reproducible builds which we have not really tackled much so far. So far we are only still working on this theory. Um, and yeah, I explained this already. We also, to work together, we had um, reproducible build summits, which are like mini DevCons or those conferences, um, where we for three days sit together and we don't hack. Instead, we sit in a circle or in several circles and just discuss, brainstorm or do these things and we take notes and um, have published them on our website and there were around 40 people at each summit with from 20 projects. So all these projects have been at the summit and more. Um, you can go to reproducible builds slash org slash who to see which projects are involved. So when you look, if you want to look at differences between two packages, the one, the tool everybody knows is diff and diff will show you the differences between two text files nicely and you know that. But if you do this onto Debian packages, you get this, which is not helpful. And so we should build a better dev tool, diff tool. And Luna started this. And this has become diffoscope. In the beginning, it was called debbin diff, the Debian binary diff. But we renamed it to diffoscope because diffoscope can now um, deal with many more packages. I'll show them some. So the way diffoscope works. Um, it goes, rec you give it two objects, 
um, and then it goes recursively through these objects. So you give it two Debian packages, and Debian packages are R archives. Then in the R archive, there's two tar archives, and in the tar archive, there is whatever, a PDF, and the PDF includes a PNG, and in the PNG, the timestamp is different. And Diffoscope will show that nicely. Um, and it will show it either in plain text or an HTML version, or also JSON. Um, and this is the list of formats Diffoscope understands now. So it does every, so it does CPO, CPIO archives, RPMs. You can give it two directories, you can give it two ISOs, you can give it two file systems, to anything, to, to open office documents. And if there's a file format which Diffoscope doesn't support, please file a bug and give us the test cases and we will support it. It also does Android archives and TCP dumps and <laughs> many, many things. And there's, um, oh no, <coughs> there's Diffoscope.org is the web page and there's also try.diffoscope.org which is an online service where you can upload two files. You don't need to install it because if you install Diffoscope on a plain system, it will install about 1.5 gigabytes of packages to be able to deal with all these formats. And this is how Diffoscope text mode looks. So you see there these control and data um, tar archives are different and then it shows how they are different and you see here the, these are timestamp difference. I'll have some more examples later. Um, yeah, and try Diffoscope is really, go there, give it a look, upload two things, it's really nice. And Diffoscope is also, it doesn't only work it's on, on Linux, it's been ported, so it's been port available in Arch Linux and Fedora, it's been ported to BSD, it's available for Net and FreeBSD, it runs on Mac OS, it does not yet run on Windows, um, but it's Python, so it should be possible also. And it can also show differences in security uploads. Because if the, if the packages are reproducible before, then the, the security upload will only have the changes you want. And you can see it with Diffoscope. And Diffoscope is not the definition or the tool to find out if something is reproducible. The tool to, to find out if something is reproducible is just diff or CMP or chart, whatever some, so it, has, it should have the same hash. Diffoscope is the tool to investigate why something is not reproducible. And you can also use it to inspect files you don't know. For example, router images or whatever binary software you get. You can look into it with Diffoscope. Um, so what's left to do? The source code. There's still programming errors in the source code. There can be backdoors or obfuscated code in the source code. Weak algorithm, MD5 is still insecure even if it's reproducible. And code with testing mode. There's, so the source code, we don't care, we, we don't look at the source code. So the source code still, somebody needs to look at the source code. Reproducible builds is just really to see whether the compilation process made something with the source code you don't want to do. And then the other thing, what do we want to do with this? Um, so this is a up and it says there, the following packages are not reproducible. You install them anyway and we don't think this is a good user interface. Because what should you do? You want the software, so you will not say no. So what we think to have a good user interface is just to have all packages reproducible and just prevent installation of non-reproducible software. But this is still some time to go. <coughs> what else needs to be done? We still need to fix toolchain issues. GCC is the one example because it has it's the biggest problem with the build pass, but the build pass is also leaked, leaked by lots of documentation systems um, which put them somewhere in the generated PDF or whatever thing. Um, Sphinx was just discussed, there's many um, toolchain issues. And toolchain is just not, where Debian has 
40 compilers or something. There's COBOL, Erlang, OCaml, whatever. There's JavaScript and the, these, this is one part of the tool chain and the other tool chain are documentation system. And there's many documentation system in Debian and they, most of them leak something into the objects. Um, we want to improve our tools further, which is Diffoscope on the one hand, but also Disorder FS. And we want mandating that Debian packages must be reproducible. Last year in August, during DebCon 17, Debian policy was changed, so it now says packages should be reproducible, but it's just should, so if it's not reproducible, it's a normal bug. And we want it to be a serious bug, so packages must be reproducible so that unreproducible packages don't go into testing. And then we get closer to 100%, but I, we will still not be there with this must, because if we are um, faced with the decision whether we kick out, we cannot release without the Linux kernel. We cannot release without many, many tools. So if they are unreproducible, the release team will just ignore this bug and release anyway. So policy must does not change it at all, or it changes a bit, but Together, we really need to fix the software and not just have policy there. And we can, with reproducible builds, we can also defeat this trusting trust problem. If you don't know that trusting trust is a problem identified, I think, in the 70s by the C, uh, C um, creators. So you have a C compiler, and this is usually already a binary blob, and this builds the next binary blob. And that's bootstrapping is the problem. <coughs> and our idea is that you have two tiny C compilers which are able to build each other and then you build each other with the other one again and then the, if both results then are the same then you know that this compiler is fine. But this is also just theory at the moment. We are working towards it but have not reached it yet. So please get involved, um, visit our webpage. It's, there's also documentation with common problems, like whatever, gzip by default does not sort the stuff, so you need to use gzip minus n, and there's, some, there's documentation what problems there are. We have also a package which is called the unreproducible package, where there are several problems are explained and their fixes. We, we are on Twitter. Um, and we also do a weekly blog. Since three years, every week we blog. So we are now at issue 155, I think. So next year, next week, it's our three-year anniversary. Um, and we are on IRC. This is Reproducible Builds is our general channel. There's also Debian Reproducible, which is just for Debian. There's Arch Linux Reprodu Reproducible, Arch Linux, or Arch Linux, Repro Arch Linux Reproducible. Um, and we generally don't care. We are happy to talk about non-Debian stuff on the Debian channel. We are generally helpful and want to fix the problems. Yeah, and there's also one th eight or 800 um, patches we have submitted which were not merged. We've, m we've submitted 2,000 patches which were merged. So one third not, which is two thirds were merged. This is a good, good ratio. But still, you can do lots of NMUs. If you're a Debian developer, please help us NMU this stuff because the bugs are laying there since half a year or longer. That was that from me. So, hi. Uh, I don't know if I understood everything really well, but my question is, is the Linux kernel reproducible? If not, why not? The Linux kernel, the, the Debian Linux kernel package is not reproducible, I think, because there's some problems in the documentation. The kernel itself is reproducible. And there's one... If I start packaging, if I want to test if my package is reproducible, uh, so I'd like to test all those cases about different uh, dates, different um, localities. 
Is there a tool I can use? There's, there's, there's two ways to test this. For one, we have one tool which is called ReproTest. It's in Debian, so up to install ReproTest. And ReproTest will do the variations for you. And Re ReproTest has also a mode where it um, varies the variations. So it builds with all variations, and then it sees it's unreproducible, and then it removes the local variation. And if it's then reproducible, then you know, aha, it's something with the local. And if it's not reproducible, then, then it removes the next variation until you know from which variation this is caused. The other way to find out is just to upload your package to Debian, because then we will run it on your package automatically. Because we test all the packages anyway, so everything which gets uploaded is automatically tested with all the variations. And this is then also shown on Tracker Debian org. So this is Tracker for the Debian policy. And you can see there it does not build reproducible. So if your package has this, then this is the problem. Or then you know it. You don't know why yet, but. And if. Um, I have another question. If okay, uh, is there also um, another tool to check if my system got compromised? Uh, if my, the package I installed is exactly the same, um, if it is reproducible? You cannot really, you cannot use this to detect whether your system is compromised. But you, what, what the only thing you can do is build it on your system, and if you know it's reproducible, and then build it elsewhere, then you might see, okay, one of the two systems is compromised because the hashdump doesn't match, and it should match. But it's only the reverse proof. Thank you. If you f either you can either go to tracker.debian.org and to your package there, or you can also go to reproducible.debian.net slash your source package, and this will give you this. This is again for Debian policy, and if we have investigated it, we also leave notes there. So we have some different issues, issue user and groups in tarball, tarball timestamp in tarball, timestamp in gcp headers, different U2U mask, different timestamp, diff timestamp in documentation generated by Emacs org mode, timestamp in, in PS generated by dvips. So these are all issues the Debian policy used to have because these are the nodes from version 397 and policy is at 414 at the moment. So this, these nodes are outdated, we need to work on those. But this is the stretch differences. So it's policy 398 over there, which is the version in stretch. And I want just to stress an example of diffoscope output. And so it says here that the, this step is different. And then you see inside the depth, there's these differences in the control and in the data um, file, and then you scroll further down, and you see here some file sizes are different, so that's not helpful, not helpful, but here you see 2018, and here you see 2019, so you see this, is the, this leaked the build date into the binary. And this was the old policy version. If you now look at the new policy version, this is all gone, but what's still there besides this, which no, you don't understand, I don't understand, here you see the year and the months is the same, but the build date is different, and this is because it, the time zone is there, because we built with GMT minus 12 and GMT plus 14, so it's more than a day different. So if you have build dates which are just different by one day, it's due to the time zone variation. So it, you need to manually look at why it's unreproducible. More questions? So thank you, Hogar. Uh, I'm also involved in a few initiatives that like expand the whole Debian archive, and there's always this issue of people not picking up the patches and it's hard to push things forward because uh, people don't care. Do, do you think you have insights from reproducible builds on this type of initiative and what we can do better in Debian? Uh, 
to make sure that the people pushing these initiatives don't get blocked forever. Your question is what we can do to uh, that our work is not lost? What we can do as Debian to make sure that initiatives that spend the whole archive, like reproducible views or auto package tests or stuff like that, doesn't get blocked forever with un unresponsive maintainers and patches sitting in the BTS for. I'm not sure what can be done. I think when, I, when these patches we submitted, half of them are acted very quickly, like in a day or two. Those are superb. And then there's the other half, or maybe it's just one third, where there's, not re there's either no reaction or hmm reaction or something, and which I th I think the, the problem there in Debian, is, which is one of the strengths of Debian, is the strong maintainership model. But also what Debian has since many years now has changed the way we do NMUs, non-maintainer uploads. They, non -maintainer uploads. they used to be very frowned upon, and now they are not that much anymore. They are more widely accepted. And I think we need to be more actively doing more NMUs. So we, we tried this, Chris, Mattia, and me tried to do NMUing, NMU campaign for reproducible builds. We announced it, announced it on Debian Devil. People were happy with it. And I think we did maybe 100 or 200, or maybe it's three or 400 now. But we are st there still, I could do 500 NMUs, but I don't do them. So, so you could blame me. <laughs> and so it's not blaming me, but it's blaming um, it's not only the maintainer who don't accept the patches, but it's also it needs people who actively do that. And Lumbi does it. Lumbi does one NMU per day or something. But even that will take two or three years till he doesn't got any more thing to do. And he does file new patches, so it will take a long time. So I think the way out is to do be more friendly with NMUs. <coughs> and one way, what I what I like about Fedora. In Fedora, you can clone every Fedora source package with lives on git fedora project org slash git slash source package name. While in Debian, it can be in git, it can be in SVN, it can be on Salsa, it can be on GitHub, it can be somewhere. So that's, that's a complete mess. And this mess is good on the one hand because it allows us to experiment with new stuff. And the mess is really harmful because it's a mess. So that's the same, but this is the same with um, the packaging tools. Nowadays, most, most packages use Step Helper 9, or 10 maybe even now, but there are still CDBS, there used to be Yada, there are some packages which don't use any helper tool, and this is both a strength and a downside. Because you, strength is we can develop new tools, downside is you don't know what tool has been used. Um. I would like to ask about the, the tracker, trackerdebian.org, that um, usually says that it's not reproducible. Then you go there and see that, hey, it's saying about GCC captures build path, that I should ignore that. It's about the two chain that, but uh, then if there's ever a regression, and if I start ignoring that hint that it's not reproducible, I won't maybe notice that. Do you think there's a way to improve, like, hey, you, you had these uh, bugs, and now you have these more bugs, so it's, it kind of regressed? I don't think it makes sense to, to differentiate between it has three rep unreproducible issues and two. It's, it, might, it makes sense to see the package was reproducible and is not reproducible anymore. But whether you introduce another uh, variation or not, I think, is meaningless. Um, so, and we are not really there that we can say these regress can track these regression very well, but I think once we're there, we will do that because we've we've done this with PO parts results with the testing migration, and that is sensible. Regarding tracker, is also on tracker we show the results for testing for Debian testing and not for unstable. So that if you go. Um, 
if a package is unreproducible only in unstable but not in testing, Tracker will show that it's reproducible because that is just the build pass variation and the workaround is so simple, just build in the same build pass. I suppose most of these patches are upstream patches and a few of them are actually uh, packaging patches, but we only apply them because we want the fix to arrive before upstream gets a new release. Is that right? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure whether most of the patches uh, bugs are really um, upstream bugs. There's many, or there's many fixes which we can be done in the Debian packaging, which are then nice for Debian but don't help the free software world in general. Yeah. Um, so we try to fix it upstream, but that is also something we have not done that much. We Debian people. There's Bernard Wiedemann from OpenSUSE who has been way more active than us in pushing stuff <coughs> upstream, um, which is partly a manpower issue also. Yeah. I, also, I mostly heard about reproducible builds from Debian. Are there many people from the other distributions helping this initiative? Many, yes. This is what I had here. There's this. Oh, the there. Um. And so the, the OpenSUSE people are really actively doing lots of upstream work and they have, they also test OpenSUSE or it's only Bernard mostly doing that. Um, <coughs> the ba Basil is also interesting. Basil is a build tool by Google which is designed to do reproducible builds. And that it's, it's also used, it's used by Google but it's also usable um, by other projects. You can, could build your Debian package with it. With it. Um, the Arch Linux people are now quite active. F-Droid is interested in, or is working on F-Droid as an application store for Android. Um, the NixOS and Geeks people are also actively doing that. There was just a scientific paper by the Geeks people um, for bioinformatics software, I think. And they had 98% um, of their software reproducible. And so <coughs> there's many people working on this now. This is um, what, I, what I didn't tell that Debian started in 2013 on it. The, there were two projects who did, worked on this earlier, which were Tor, who made the Tor browser reproducible in 2011, and the Bitcoin people, because they were afraid if there was Bitcoin was worth four billion dollar in total, and they were afraid somebody would um, release a Trojan Bitcoin client and then steal all the Bitcoin, and they would be blamed. So they did it. They were the first to really prove <coughs> it possible. And then we started, and it's become many projects now. So if we have networks. Sure. So this. BaseRock is a Debian-based distro. <coughs> ElectroBSD also was the first BSD to show it. ElectroBSD is a BSD free, it's a free BSD fork, and they had the base system reproducible before FreeBSD and NetBSD. Um, Fedora is working a bit on it. Lida is open up. So there's more, and they all work in various things. Uh, it's the tails, tails, the tails that the tails 3.5 release was reproducible. That was the first tails release which was reproducible. Then tails 3.6.0 was not reproducible, and then tails 3.6.1 is reproducible again. And they also had it in their PR material, so it's getting there. And this is the other thing. This is reproducible builds only work with free software. But we have now self-driving cars. We have pacemakers. Some people have pacemakers or other medical devices in their body. There's nuclear power plants. There's whatever weapons. They all run with software. And nobody can really know what's inside. If you don't have reproducible builds, you cannot really be sure that the source code you reviewed 
is really the source code which is running. So this, this is really an advantage of free software, which people start to understand now. The other thing is um, what I just said, that Tor and Bitcoin were the first in 2011. This is not true, as I just learned last year, and I've been working on this for four years, because last year we learned that the GNU auto tools from um, Cygnus, who did commercial GNU support in the 90s, they, in 1992, released the GNU auto tools bit by bit reproducible for nine architectures. But every, the code bit rotted and the world forgot, even the GNU developers forgot. So that was, and we hope we now made enough fuss that people will not forget that this is both possible and um, desirable. Do you have a BTS user tag? There's an unreproducible user tag, but that does not mean what we mean. <laughs> That means I cannot reproduce this bug. Uh, we, have, um, we, have, we, have, we have user tags. There's a tag, but we have user tags. Do, do you have one? Yeah, we have, we have 11 or 14 <laughs> or something. <laughs> but we have, for each issue, like uh, leaks environment, or there's... Um, It's a really a complex topic, so it's also I skipped a lot of things in this talk because there's too much information. I think I was there's too much information already, and there's <coughs> so the BTS user attack is. There's one for Jenkins or .org, packages or .org. Mm, No, that is that is the Jenkins things. It's in the wiki. <laughs> we, started, we started in the Debian wiki and then moved everything to reproducible builds because we didn't want to be in the Debian wiki because we wanted to be cross-distro project. Go to wikidebian.org slash reproducible builds and then bug, re then bug reports. There you find the user tech. And so the user tech is reproducible me minus builds alias. I will take it as a reminder to make these bugs easier to find again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, I'm not to understand why some binaries are reproducible for a, sp in a specific architecture, but not for another. Why? What was the question? Uh, I mean, like you can, s I, I have seen many of uh, reproducible status status there. Like uh, this is reproducible for x86, but this is not reproducible for ARM, for example. Uh, what is the reason for that? That depends. <laughs> um, it can be that um, we have bit the variations we do are a bit different on the different architectures. We test AMD 64, i386, ARM HF, and ARM 64. Um, and some problems only occur on some architectures for whatever reasons. So it's some problems are only on, there's, there's some bugs which are only on 32-bit architectures. 
So on a 64-bit architecture, it's reproducible on 32-bit not, or vice versa. Um, that can be the problem in the source code, and the other could, can be that the variations we do are different, and so it's just not visible in our test framework. But it's, there are some things which are not visible on all architectures. But for the other thing, for example, we on i386, we vary. We once built with a 32-bit kernel and once with a 64-bit kernel because you can do this on, on the 32-bit architectures. But on the 64-bit architectures, you always need to use a 64-bit kernel. So if the kernel, um, what is it, the kernel, the architecture is leaked into the binary, then you will get different results for that package only on ARM HF and i386. There's lots and lots of lots and lots of details. It's horrible. It's great. Details are good. But uh, you have mentioned that uh, the reproduci reproducibility helps with the. Uh, with caching and build uh, and compile time, how so? Um, if you if you have a big source source code, and you only change a small part of it, and then if you want to rebuild this big source code, but you know that the results will be the same for the stuff, you can use the cached result. You don't need to compile it because you know the result will be the same because it didn't change that area of the source code. Uh, so you can get the, the build environment af uh, after the, the build and, and paste it in another machine and I, I quite don't get it. No, you need to do it on the same machine. You need to be able to reuse them. And I'm, I'm not sure how Bazel this achieves internally, but it is possible to do that and there's tools to do that. More question? So thank you, Hogar. Thank you too. <laughs> and I'm happy to talk about this the next two or three or four days. <laughs> <laughs>